it was a, there was a, it was a, it was a great victory for us. I want to want to thank the Chick Fil A Peach Bowl uh, for just uh, an incredible experience for for our football team, I mean, our entire organization, and we're we're forever grateful uh, for for the opportunity. Uh, our guys uh, played extremely hard, uh, like they always do. Um, it was uh, they never flinch. Uh, they continue to, to just keep chopping wood and keep believing, and and uh, we we're able to hit our stride there in the second half and play complimentary football and offense, defense, and special teams. You know, working together, and we were able to uh, you know take it down into the deep into the fourth quarter, and and uh, and we we got stronger and stronger as the game went. And uh, we went down into the deep water, and and uh, we we're able to uh, to find a way to get it done. And it was uh, we were really uh, really proud of our guys and and our seniors. Our fans were incredible. Um, they they traveled. They were deep, and they really they really um, helped pull us through. And uh, so I know there's going to be a lot of a lot of partying in in the Spartan Nation tonight. And so. Uh, it was just uh, a great experience, and uh, you know, to get to 11, 11 wins and and uh, and the New Year's Six Bowl uh, is quite an accomplishment for this for this group. All right, our first question will come from Chris Solari. You no, know, I wanted to talk a little bit about that fourth quarter in particular, the job that Peyton did. Um, there didn't seem like a lot of panic or impatience there on those final two drives. What did you see from him? And really, what what was the difference maybe between those middle couple quarters where he was missing some targets and when he started to find that rhythm? Well, he showed tremendous poise. He showed a level of maturity. Um, you know, we we talked throughout the, throughout the entire game, um, and uh, and uh, you know, we just talked about you know what do we need to do to to get better. You know, what do we need to do to get on get on track? And you know, we had a we had a. You know, we kept communicating, and, and he said that, you know, that he was missing, he was missing some throws, and and uh, you know, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't accurate. And I asked him why. I said why, you know, why, why, why is that? And he says, he told me that he, he, uh, it was his footwork, and that the, he was, uh, you know, really just not, not delivering the ball the way he normally does. And I, and I told him, I said, well, you know, get your feet right, you know, fix your footwork. And cut it loose, you know. Just just start slinging it. And he said, "Okay." And uh, and then uh, you know, he, and he went out and, and he did that. And and uh, you know, he's got good players around him, a good offensive line, you know, uh, the receivers, you know, the backs, and you know, defense uh, stood up for us there and, and got stops and kept getting them the ball back. And we were solid on special teams, so we were able to play field position football. And uh, and we were able to get it done, but uh, Peyton showed a, a level of maturity um, and just resiliency. That uh, and I told him after the game, I said, you know what, what you did was really hard to do, and uh, and I was really proud of him for that. And it was a great experience, and, and I think the best is ahead for him. Next question, we'll go to Matt Charbonneau. No, I want to ask you about the defense. Obviously, they lost the quarterback again, so they're down to their third guy. Lost a running back at some point, but can you just talk about this? It's a unit that has, you know, caught a lot of grief this year. You know, hasn't played its best at times, but tonight seemed to really kind of step up. Had a lot, forced a lot of punts there, a lot of three and outs. Just talk about that unit's performance overall tonight. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, the preparation leading up to this game was was outstanding. Uh, you know, Scotty and the entire defensive staff put together a great plan. Uh, never wasted a, a a minute in preparation, and uh, our guys were were fresh and they were ready to go, and they understood what what we needed to do, and and uh, and so uh, it was all about execution. The guys played extremely hard. Uh, and they believe in what we're doing, um, and and uh, you know we had rush and coverage working together, um, and so uh, it was just a relentless effort. Uh, for the defense, and you know, we were able to, uh, you know, get some three and outs. You know, we were able to affect the quarterback, and uh, you know, get the ball back to our offense, make some big plays, and uh, and that's you know, that's what defenses do. And you know, the the pass is not necessarily predictive 
you know, of the future, you know, unless you don't change the behavior. And, uh, you know, we change some, you know, we, we play better. You know, we execute it better. We play with better fundamentals. You know, we, we, uh, we, we, we got better um, from, the Penn, from the end of the Penn State game until, uh, until tonight. And so it, it showed on the field. And, we, and because of that, we got better results. Next, we'll go to Jared Ramsey at the State News. Mel, um, I was just curious. You have talked all season about how this is such a fun group to coach. Um, after the final game, uh, what was your assessment of this team overall and your relationship with them? Well, I told him in the locker room that um, – well, first I told him before the game that was a, we have a tremendous amount of uh, gratitude for this group, you know, our coaching staff. And we appreciate um, them and, and everything that they've done this season, all the hard work that they put in. And, uh, you know, and after the game, again, you know, just proud of their performance. Um, you know, really um, happy for our seniors that have given us, given us so much, you know, given this university so much. And, um, and I told them that this performance was – was uh, you know very and in, in, in it was very um, you know it was very and um, in, it was indicative of how we played all season and our culture and you know we're relentless you know we uh, we don't flinch um, we uh, we believe in the process we keep chopping we're we're in great condition and we know that we can go deep into the fourth quarter. Um, and you know wear teams down, you know take them into the deep water, um, and and that's and that's where we that's where we want to be, and we were able to get them to that point, and we're able to finish. And so uh, it was a it was a tremendous it was a tremendous victory uh, to get to get to eleven wins. Um, it was it's quite an accomplishment, um, and doing it as a foot as a as a team, playing complimentary football, um, you know that's. Uh, that was just, uh, it was just tremendous. The best, is a, the best is ahead for us. Next, we'll go to Don Montgomery. Thank you. I actually have two questions. Um, I know that, I know with the coach that you just said that the best is yet to come. Um, just kind of like you just, you won your first bowl game. Let's start there. And now that you're moving forward with the team, you're locked in with a great contract and everything to move forward. Um, talk about what you're looking forward to doing in the next season. Well, you know, it's a it's going to be a 24 hour rule for for me, and uh, we're going to enjoy this victory, and then we're going to get back to work. And uh, you know, recruiting is is extremely important, and uh, the contact period is going to open up here pretty soon, and we're going to. We're going to hit the ground running, um, and then we're going to have a great, you know, uh, out of season uh, conditioning program leading up into spring ball, um, and then we're going to we're going to train like crazy, and and work to improve our football team, um, and uh, and and our goal is to win every game on our schedule, and and uh, so you know there's a lot of there's a lot of hard work that's going, that needs to be done between now and. The, and uh, when we kick off again next season, um, but you know we're you know we're going to remain focused and, and determined um, to get you know, where we need where we need to go. And uh, you know we play in a, we play in a tough conference. It's very rugged. It's very competitive. Um, you know, but we're in it. We're in it to win it. And so uh, you know, I, I do believe that our best uh, is ahead. Um, but you know it's going to be about our actions. It's going to be about our behavior. That's what's going to create the outcome. And so uh, you know we're going to we're going to get back to work. You know we're going we're going to chop hard um, to get this football team better, and uh, so we can uh, you know so we can uh, you know go after our goals next season. Awesome. My last question is about the fans. I know it was exciting to see so many Spartan fans there in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Um, just kind of express your gratitude, I guess, in a sense of support of, you know, the fans, the alumni, the students that travel to the city of Atlanta in the midst of COVID and everything. Just kind of just share your thoughts on that, please. Well, our fans have been great all season. 
and uh, Spartan, uh, Spartan Nation is strong, has always been strong. Uh, football is extremely important here at, Mich here at Michigan State, and we have a tremendous fan base um, across the country and throughout the world. You know, 500,000 living alumni, and uh, and they've traveled well all season, and uh, and, uh, and the watch parties in the in all the different cities and all the alumni uh, alumni clubs, and and it's just a uh, you know everyone's very excited about the direction of our program, and they support us. Uh, they they support us uh, in some in 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 many many ways, and and so uh, I, I want to thank our fans, you know, for believing in us and and supporting our program, and you know they will that they, they will continue to, to do that, and um, our fans deserve a, a a winning football team. Our fans deserve a championship football team. You know, our fans deserve to see a brand of football that they can be proud of. And and that's and that's what we're here to do. Um, we it, it means something to us uh, to make our fans proud, and um, and that's something that we that we talk about you know all the time, and we're going to continue to do that. You know we're going to do it as a team. You know our team on the field and our fans. Um, you know together. You know we're going to accomplish some great things here. All right. Our next we'll go to Graham Couch. And Mel, I'm wondering, you know, you talk about the, the, the future and everything, but you've talked also this season about maximizing your potential, reaching your potential. Do you feel like this team did that? Is that one of the things in terms of uh, foundation, in terms of culture and moving forward and things to build off as a program? What this team did is that? I felt like our, I felt like our team uh, gave us everything that they had every game and, um, and, and emptied the bucket. You know, with extreme effort, um, played with toughness, was resilient. You know, played played to win, um, and uh, and and that's and that's that's all you that's all you can ask. Uh, and you know, when the when the fourth quarter when the fourth quarter uh, starts, um, you know, most teams put up a put up a four. You know, we put up a one, and that one really basically signifies that. You know, one minute after the game, you know, what will we be able to say to each other? You know, coaches, players, will we be able to say, you know, win, lose, or draw? That we 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 gave everything that we had on the field for each other. Um, and if we can say that, then we can live with that. And I felt like um, this football team just really laid it laid it laid it on the line. Um, and gave us everything that gave us everything that they had, um, and so uh, and really have laid the foundation for you know how we need to play football here, and our culture is uh, you know is really uh, is shifted, and is we're cementing it and we're building upon it every single day, and uh, the brand of football that we play here at Michigan State. Um, is uh, is is very important, and everyone should be able to look on that field, um, and when they see us play, and say, "Those guys, those guys play hard. Those guys are tough. They're physical. They won't quit. They don't flinch." And and that's what Michigan State football has always been about, and that's what it, and that's what. And that's what we see on the field. All right. In the interest of time, we're going to do three more from the individuals who traveled, starting with Matt Wenzel. Hey, Mel, with uh, Jalen coming back, that seemed to obviously make a big difference in your passing attack. And then uh, Jaden Reed and what could have been his final game for you guys turning quite a performance. Just wondering what you saw from those two guys uh, together and how that they're, them being on the field at the same time changes your passing attack. Well, they're both tremendous players, as we all know. Um, they they compete. Uh, they 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 can win one on one. Um, you know, they're dynamic players, um, and they're team they're team guys. Um, and they 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 block hard in the run game, um, and uh, 
in the past game, you know, th those guys are hard to cover, you know, uh, and it's not just, you know, not just deep balls, but, you know, it could be a short game, intermediate, um, and, a, and also in, the, in, in um, you know, the deep passing game. They're very, very productive. Um, they're dangerous. Um, and they're they're absolute difference makers. Thanks, Mel. Yep, you're welcome. All right, our next question is going to be Stephen Brooks, and then we're going to wrap up with Jack Ebling. Stephen, sure. Thanks, Matt. Hey, Mel. Uh, when you you guys have won many games, sort of like this this year, where you've had some late things go in Miami, uh, Nebraska. You know, you you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure. How many times does that have to happen? You think until it just becomes part of that identity and part of that culture? And, and can that carry over into next year when you guys have done it as many times as you have? Or does it just always have to sort of be a constantly renewed thing? How can you kind of sustain that, make that that long term, you know? Well, you know, it's, it's, part, of our, it's part of our mental conditioning. It's part of our culture. It's the way we train. Um, you know, it's the way we practice. It's, you know, it's our mindset. And, um, and that's the way you have to play the game of football. You know, it's a, it's a four-quarter game. Um, you have to continue to, to always play the next play. Um, you know, just you know, just keep chopping, just keep going. Every play has a history and a life of its own. And and so uh, you don't look at a scoreboard. You just you just keep playing the next play with extreme effort and, and extreme toughness. And um, you know, you know, coaching ten years in the National Football League. I mean. Almost, you know, all those games go down. A lot of those games go down to the the last drive. You know, two minutes to win the game. You know, and when you're competing at a very high level, um, with uh, you know, against very good competition, you know, you have to be prepared. You know, to uh, to to win games late in the fourth quarter. You know, with conditioning, uh, mental and physical toughness. Um, and a never, a never stop, never flinch attitude, and that's and that's how we train, um, and that's how we need to play, uh, because you know, the, at the top where the where the best compete, success is measured in inches, and you know you have to be at your best when your best is needed, and oftentimes that's down the stretch, late in the fourth, you know you got to make plays. Um, and you got to you got to find a way to get it done. You got to find a way to get in the left hand column, because this is a binary situation. You either get a one or you get a zero, and our guys understand that, and, and, and we're playing to win. Thank you. Right, and we'll wrap up with Jack Ebling. Mel, with the struggles this year in pass defense, what does it mean to you as a career long secondary coach? that you've won or saved five games with late interceptions, key interceptions. And what does it say that you're the only team in the country that's beaten two power five conference champions in 2021? Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's, it's something to build. It's something to build upon. Um, it, it means that, you know, our guys, um, our, our coaches and our players believe in what we're doing. Um, and that, um, you know, when we when we execute, um, when we have our rush and our coverage working together, and we um, we play our techniques, we play with great technique and fundamentals. Um, everyone does their job. Um, that you know we can be efficient, you know, in in pass defense, and we can be you know, we can be stout in the run game. Um, and and uh, and when we have success. You know, we need to continue to understand why we had success and build on those things. We're going to keep adding players uh, to our roster, keep adding depth, um, and and build on the positives, and and own and own and own the negatives, and and, and figure out how we can how we can get better. And so, uh, but you know, the effort the effort was there tonight, um, and guys were at were. There was an element of competitive greatness, um, and and that is you know being at your best when your best is needed, and and um, and that's what we've seen you know this season. Just like you talked about, 
in several games. Guys have made plays down the stretch um, to uh, to ice games, and and so uh, there's there's got to be uh, there's something to be there's something to be said there's something to be said for that. Um, we do have we do have pride in our program. Um, we do have pride in our defense. Um, we're not where we we're not where we need to be, um, but. Um, we're going to we're going to get there.